alone and some other places too that were quite pleasurable. On the other hand, we've got here our despicable opposition here that are trying to tell us that the internet is, is a bad place for us. I mean, here we have Alex Dyson. I mean, he's named after a vacuum cleaner. He, must, he was gonna suck, you know, like, so. <laughs> yeah. She said the internet is populated by fuckwits. Oh, really? At Alex Dyson on Twitter. <laughs> I guess that includes you. <laughs> Alan talked about his army of wowsers. <laughs> washed over me. I wasn't affected by that. Now, I do believe that the internet is a place that does foster sexual and gender diversity. And I think my story actually goes some way to proving that. Now, I grew up in North Queensland, a pretty normal girl, a bit of a tomboy. But when I got to puberty, I realised something was not quite right. I wasn't going through the same changes that my girlfriend and it confused me. Finally, at the end of my high school years, I found out the full truth. I had a condition called AIS, or androgen insensitivity syndrome. Basically, my chromosomes are male, and even though I look female, I'm actually a balance of male and female aspects. In other words, I'm a hermaphrodite. Now, receiving this information at such a tender age is confusing say the very least. And I had a lot of questions swelling around my head, not least around sex. So was I meant to be attracted to boys or girls or both? And would my body actually work when it came to the sexual lead? For 10 long years, I wondered these questions and the whole time I thought to myself, you know, it would be really, really cool if I found someone else who had the same experience as me and I could actually just you see, I was living in a cone of silence. My condition was considered so stigmatizing that I was told by my parents, basically, to keep it a secret. And any time anyone mentioned anything along the lines of sex or menstruation or anything completely kind of about the reproductive system, I just sort of stayed nice and quiet in the back row. However, in those 10 years, a lot of things happened, technologically speaking. People started getting an email account surf the internet, and you have these wonderful search engines like Google. I don't know why it took me so long, but one day I got the idea to actually search androgen and sensitivity syndrome on a Google search. And I put the words in, and I seriously expected there to be zero results. Instead... Hang on, hang on. Who said first boy is using sex appeal? <laughs> Not me. <laughs>
Um, okay, so what else is um, the internet good for? I mean, you know, our society is getting rather technocratic and sexualized at the same time. I mean, we've talked about free porn, free homemade porn. Yeah, my husband loves that. Um, there's also, you know, all sorts of other things that I think are really fascinating about the internet. For example, has anyone checked out textfromlastnight.com? Yes. Yeah, that stuff's cool. I spent like three hours just reading those like texts, like, and oh, it was so funny because I started really laughing out of, after about the second hour kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like going, oh my god, like, but anyway, if you haven't seen it before, check it out, it's really funny. It's basically the last text someone drunkenly sends to their best mate uh, at the end of a really debaucherous night by most accounts sort of thing. So I've got two examples here from the all-time best night out and all the all-time worst night out. So the first one, number one on their, their list, which had about 90,000 votes or something, was that someone texted, I just walked into a room at this party and someone yelled, Dibs! <laughs> and the first one was, so I went on a date with this girl and who's our waitress? My girlfriend got a second job. She didn't tell me about to for my birthday present. <laughs> okay. So that's pretty funny, and I think that that's actually <laughs> some stuff out there that you know we need to know about, and it's actually making you know your kind of terrible night out seem all that much more better, kind of thing. Um, the other thing I'm really interested about on the internet is not only like you know sexual diversity amongst humans, but what about interspecies and robot sex and humans? Okay, I mean there's a lot of debate about. <laughs> There's a lot of debate about interspecies sex and second life. And, um, you know, because I guess some people go in as an avatar as a cat or a dog and they sort of making out with other human avatars. And is this right kind of thing? Yeah, you know, it's an avatar sort of thing, so go for it. Um, and there are also, you know, some fundamentalists that um, recently came to a um, uh, US congressional hearing on the issue of gay marriage. And they were sort of a bit worried that uh, the Gay Marriage Act would lead to people actually wanting to create unions with their robots or with um, animals and things like that. But my opinion is that love seems like a precious commodity. Wherever you find it, you know, go for it. So, um, my last word on this matter is teledelonics. <laughs> okay, now this is kind of cool. You can buy this kit now where you can plug in your own hardware then while you're down downloading your own software to your iPhone app kind of thing, and then remotely pleasure a partner that might be living over the other side of the world sort of thing. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I think the future of sex is definitely looking bright. Thank you. Trying to find cannibal porn on the internet is rather difficult. <laughs> I've searched for the past 12 months to find a clip of a cannibal giving someone a blowjob. <laughs> it's not quite normal yet. But it sounds deep. I'd like to eat them. <laughs> now, a man like me that likes to bite nails and eat hair. brother's over there, touching himself. You can film and she can put on the internet, nothing's going to help me feel normal. <laughs> Uncomfortable after is pretty much where I pictured. <laughs> now, I'm 
I'm not alone. The internet hasn't made a new template for normal. It's just put a spotlight on us freaks. For example, have you heard of sneeze porn? Could someone hear sneeze? I just came. <laughs> Here's some examples of sneeze porn sites you could go to. Brandy is truly one of the premier sneezers of the community. This is just a small video sample of what she has to offer with a buffet style of sneezing. <laughs> Brandy is no joke. Lacey's awesome with her latest video, flared nostrils, false starts, soft tissue sneezes, and that gorgeous pre-sneeze face. <laughs> a blonde sneeze dream. Jamie's video was shot at night, but the beauty of both her and sneezes you simply can't deny. These sneezes are fake, but her clip has real pepper included to induce the sneezes. <laughs> and what about lactating males? <laughs> Who's going to drink on my human kindness? <laughs> what about adult babies? Adult babies? <coughs> <laughs> That's all she's got. <laughs> and bestiality. How has the internet helped us more tolerant with that? Now, being a cannibal, you know, I don't eat animals, but I'm happy to fuck them. <laughs> My philosophy is you shouldn't fuck what you eat. <laughs> Now the thing is, the internet's done nothing for this. Bestiality has been legal in Sweden since 1944. Gives a new sense of the term Swedish meatballs. <laughs> See, in Germany you can mount your schnauzer but you can't film it. But I can watch that film in Australia but I can't take my best friend out the back and give him a bone. <laughs> and in New Zealand I can't film it or fuck it. And giving their pastoral proclivities, that's rather strange. <laughs> so what is the template for normal? I'm looking at you. You've got the right glasses. I look into your eyes and I see myself looking back. <laughs> yeah, I've got my fantasies for tomorrow. <laughs> you, me, me eating you. <laughs> With me, you're against yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now, what does the internet use sexual tolerance for? Pubic hair? What the fuck happened to pubic hair? <laughs> it will never be normal again. And celibacy. There's no tolerance for celibacy anymore. What about those people that like to make sweet love to no one? I feel for them while they feel no one. What about premature ejaculation? How has the internet helped that? Sexual tolerance. We're a fast food society. We should thank that man right there for his efficiency. Tom and I have been in eight snuff films together. <laughs> he died in every one. Uh, back then we called him the Ballad of the Tom. Oh, fuck the buzzer. Ballad of the Tom, the Volcanic Cone, and the Great Tangent Cock of Warren Ball. It's good to have him here, though he's contributed very little. 
Bettina just aunt. Give, give, give. Best believe, just give, give, give. Bettina aunt, uh, Auntie Bettina. While eating small animals, I grew up studying her map of the clitoris. And we did internet dates. I felt no desire, but I went there anyway. And I'd like to do a piece for her because it means a lot to me that she's here. That's how my bedroom works too. <laughs> and it's not what I'm used to. I want to try you on like a Triple J presenter, like a library, like a shoe. I'm curious for you. You've got my attention. I kissed Bettina Art and I liked it. Taste of her cherry chapstick. I kissed her twice. Try it. I hope my publisher, her agent, her lawyer. He don't mind it. It felt so wrong, it felt so right, but it don't mean I'm in love tonight. Honey, Betty, but I kissed Bettina Hahn tonight. I liked it. I really. I think you'll be great came up. I don't know, but 
very hard to see through it all. But he warned us of the, uh, the army of Christian Wowsers, ladies and gentlemen. The army of Christian Wowsers. Is anyone really listening to Christians anymore? Really? <laughs> really? Here are some Christians. Tony Abbott, Fred Nile, George Bush, Bear Grylls, Guy Sebastian, the Jonas Brothers, Mel Gibson, for fuck's sake, ladies and gentlemen. These are people you wouldn't trust to look after a Tamagotchi. Are we really trusting them? Future of our society. No, I'm an atheist. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> this is my time to shine, Ghost Boy. Did that in the snuff films, and here we are again. No, I'm an atheist. I'm a gay vegetarian atheist. And uh, you're running for prime minister in 2000, and unlikely. <laughs> Well, that's just my opinion. I just haven't even an atheist. If you're religious, you know I'm not saying an idiot, uh, but I am thinking that <laughs> with my head. But the, the, the fact is, the influence of Christians is simply waning, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, major you know wowsers and people uh, campaigning against pornography and these so their, their influence is declining. In fact, Rick M. Santorum, a notable uh, opponent of pornography oh, in the no. states, regularly advocated against pornography, and it was. He was ridiculed via the internet. Dan Savage, a, uh, a wonderful sex columnist, took his last name, put it out to the internet, and said, Right, Rick Santorum is such a douchebag, we want to make his last name mean something horrific. And eventually, officially, the definition of the word Santorum on Urban Dictionary is a frothy mixture of lube and fecal matter that is sometimes the byproduct of anal sex. <laughs> Isn't that the most beautiful sentence you've ever heard in your life, <laughs> People aren't listening to these wows. We don't need to worry at all. Boobies are going to win, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, man. Boobies are going to win. <laughs> yes, I love boobies. <laughs> and then we come to Ghost Boy. Or Anthony Hopkins, as I like to refer to him. be fair enough, he does count as an argument against tolerance. <laughs> he also counts as an argument against art grants. Fucking hell, Winston, how good is the weed in this city? Awesome. Ghost Boy is like a... <laughs> Ghost Boy is like a prop comic without the comic or the pro. He said, I don't eat animals, but I'm happy to fuck them. He said, I'm happy to eat animals. Actually, you, animals. you got that wrong. I'm, not, I'm sorry, yes. That's just you didn't notice. Allow me to clarify. We didn't notice. We didn't notice. He said, I don't eat animals, but I'm happy to fuck them. It amazes me how much you read off paper. <laughs> yeah, I try and work out some arguments. That's how I go about it. <laughs> This is some trying work up, which is when you say your girlfriend too. Too shit, dude. Alright, come on, this is descending into chaos, everybody. Bring it on. You think you're gonna diss Brisbane? <laughs> no, I'm pro Brisbane, I'm dissing you. <laughs> of course, in case you forgot, he also raped one of my teammates, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. argument, that is. Boom! <laughs> their points are flaccid, they're selfish lovers, and to be honest, I can't even tell if they've stuck it in yet. Oh. They refuse to acknowledge the sexy potential of the internet. They fail to realise the traditional conceptions of sexuality and the traditions, traditional institutions built around those conceptions are crumbling in the face of the easy dissemination of images of she-males and gimp masks and costumes and weird positions all over the world. At the very least, ladies and gentlemen, after having watched two, two Girls, One Cup, you're bound to be a bit less judgmental than someone who just wants to you know, have them nibble on your ear, for God's sake. <laughs> the future is here, ladies and gentlemen, and all we need to do is sit back and listen to it. <laughs> a 
That's the future, ladies and gentlemen, and trust me, it's coming.
back to back, or reverse cowgirl, uh, because it's not within the realms of this negatively distorted and fragile medium called the internet. Only then will our penises and vaginas be free to frolic amongst the pubic hair of a sexually diverse society. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for coming.